a visitor from 100 years past would be confused by our selfies and our strange toys. But they wouldn't understand the need to show off. Throughout history, people have had status of symbol. Sometimes these things have been gold and jewelry, but sometimes they are a bit weirder. So hello guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be explaining 5 weirdest things that people once used as a status symbol. So let's start. In the 17th and the 18th century, pineapples were a very important status symbols. A homegrown pineapple was equivalent to 5,000 pounds investment today. So any fruit was prominently displayed rather than eaten. Pineapple would sit on mantles for a month, mainly rotting away. If you weren't rich enough to have pineapples of your very own, you can rent one for an evening. Along with the radium fashion, Americans in the early 20th century were innovated with the magical ability of the X-ray to take pictures of their skeletons. Crowds gathered at the machine to see their bones and owning your own personal X-ray picture became a status symbol. Not this, this one. The crackway or popolin, the name of the pointed tip, was a long pointed shoe popular in the late Middle Ages. The tip was anywhere from 6 to 24 inches in length. As in the case with so many status symbols, these absurd shoes showed that the wearer was wealthy because the impracticality of them proved they didn't have to do work. Edward III of England even restricted shoe length to 6 inches for commoners, 15 inches for gentlemen and longer tip for the nobility. But before, I would like to confirm that I am not talking about this display. Spreading to Europe from America and the Middle East, giant display of sugar were a kind of conspicuous consumption that reinforced wealth and power. Because sugar were rare and expensive, these displays called subtleties were initially only available to the king, the nobility, the knighthood and the church. And of course, sugar started to take on a political dimension. Heretics and publishers were mocked using sugar. At the coronation of Henry VI, each course was followed by a subtlety that confirmed the king's rights and power, and sometimes his goal as a king. And one chancellor of Oxford began a banquet with the sugar subtlety of the university, where the sugar chancellor, surrounded by sugar professors, presented written verses to a sugar king. Related to sugar obsession was a Victorian practice of blackening teeth as a sign that you could afford the teeth rotting substance. Modifying teeth as a status symbol has been pervasive throughout many cultures. The Mayans sharpened their teeth to point to loop fires. The Vikings filled lines into theirs and Japanese women blackened their teeth until this was banned in 1870 as a sign of maturity. Now I am signing off. If you want to see more videos on history, don't forget to give your little support by subscribing to our channel and like and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.